Hi everyone, welcome to this video which is going to be the build video for the Eldari Autark from the Eldritch Omens box set. Um, now there's going to be a few things that I'm going to do differently which I will point out as we progress. Uh, I haven't decided which weapon arm I'm going to use at the moment. Um, I need to look more into what each of these do before I make a decision. So I won't be gluing on a weapon arm at this point. But um, yeah, I will obviously do that fairly soon. Now, so you can have a choice of torsos with this kit. So you can have a male torso or a female torso. I've gone with female. Um, you also get a choice of three heads. So you get this head with these great plumes on. You also get this head uh, with the, the hair. And you also get this head with this other crest on it. Now, I don't like any of those heads, <laughs> just to be awkward. So what I've done is on the Shroud Runners sprue was this very female looking head, feminine looking head. And that's the head I'm gonna use for my Autark. Um, you also get a choice of backpack so you can have this massively overcompensating uh, shoulder piece shoulder pad piece um, and then there was also this smaller back piece which had this banner attached to it but I'm not a fan of banners so the banner got chopped off but let's crack on shall we so the first thing that we're going to build is going to put the torso together and the offset leg that's missing. So the leg has a it's keyed so it fits along this um, hip pad just there. So what I'm going to do is just pop on a little bit of glue. And then attach the leg like so and there's that the next thing to put on is the torso front so And there you go. I'm going to skip ahead slightly because the uh, base needs to be glued down. Now, it does say 32 millimeter base for the Autark, but I think that's a bit small for an HQ choice. So I'm going to go with a 40. Um, let's see how that works out. Um, personally, I think it'd be better. So that's the base that can be drying whilst I sort the rest of this out. So the backpack goes on here. In fact, that's wrong. I've done that wrong. The cloak goes on first. So I'm popping the cloak on. Oh, 
I'm fairly happy about this going on at this stage. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about it. It's integral for the backpack which goes on there. Like so. And then you can see how that has gone in. The one arm, the one combat arm that I have decided on is the glaive, and this has a tiny little blade which goes on like so. Thus, there you go, and then that is attached to the arm here, and it's up to you how you have it attached. I'd have a look and see how that looks. Yeah, I quite like that position. I may just be very tempted and go with and just keep the splinter pistol on my Autark, which is the basic option. That goes on like so. So this is what we're left with at the moment. We then have... this shoulder pauldron and it is keyed slightly on the just on the outside of the collar there for this Now I said that the head I was going to go for was a more feminine looking one which has kind of like a neck ruffle on it so I'm going to keep that and I'm just going to glue that in just there. And then, with the curve of the base forward, the Autark gets positioned on it like so. I'm not going to glue her down to the base so as to allow me to paint her easier. But that's the Autark, and as I say, we've got four ranged weapons here and that's the splinter pistol I'm not too sure what the rest of these are I'll have to have a look and make a decision as to which one I want join me in the next part of the video um, you may well see that I've all I've made a decision but I will also build the warp smith as well see you in a sec finally decided to just go with the splinter pistol for my autark and that is what she looks like finished piece that is her so let's go with the warp smith now the warp smith is supposed to be put onto this 60 mil oval base but what i'm going to do is get rid of that and i'm either going to put him on a 40 or i've got a 50 here depending on how his trailing tendrils look 
The other thing is that um, I'm not going to glue his backpack on, uh, or all of his backpack on. I'll obviously do the um, bits that need to go together on this, but that is so that it makes it easier to paint. Um, and then that goes in there like so. Um, unless there's something in the destructions which mean that I have to glue him together completely, that's how I'm going to do it. We start off with a1, A2 and A3 pieces. Now, we're working on the back of the torso here. What I need to do is just see how this piece is going to interact. And it needs to go the right way round so that it fits properly. Woo! Because it's not really that clear. in the destructions. So it looks like I need to glue it in place there like so. So that'll be the first thing. Just glue that in. Like so. And then that should just go into position like that. Bingo. The next thing is his left leg. And it is keyed, so it should only go in one way. Like that. We then have part of the right lower leg and the left leg's knee pad. They go on there like so. And glue the foot in. So there we have the main assembly, the main body for our Tech Marine, our Chaos Tech Marine. Next thing we're going to do is the weapon arm basically so that it is more or less dry when I come to glue it on into position and I've gone with the axe rather than the hammer because I think it looks much cooler so one axe
we then have the arm to go on but before that there's two little tendrils that come mechanical uh, tentacles which come out of his torso so part eight is this tendril with a auger on it and that goes on this side now these are keyed so in theory they should only go in one way and then the one on this side has some kind of spike on it And they kind of go in like thus so that they come out the front okay so next thing is going to be his power weapon and again this is keyed so it should only go on one way and then we have the plasma pistol which isn't keyed so Get that on like that, and there you go. Next is his head, and I have gone with the helmeted head. And looking in the direction that the plasma pistol is firing. You then have um, the rear backpack going on, which I am foregoing at this stage. But what I am going to do is pop on the shoulder pauldrons. And you have a choice. So on his right hand side, the side holding his chain axe, is this. Uh, panelled shoulder pauldron and then on the left hand side you can have one with the um, Cog Mechanicus uh, symbol denoting he's uh, obviously a tech marine or a warp smith because he's with chaos or you can have it plain so these are the three Oops, get on there, stop messing about. These are the three pauldrons, and I'm gonna not use that one, but I'm gonna use the other two sculpted ones to put on. So I'm putting the first one on there. like so and the second one on there like so and then we 
have A14 and A15 that needs to go on, and A14 and A15 are the tip for this tendril here. A14 and A15 are an assembly uh, that is this tiny little piece here, which gets glued onto the side there. It's a kind of like a little three pronged trident there. I don't know if you can see. Right, I'm going to leave that to dry a bit longer before I do the backpack. Now, the backpack, you start off gluing this piece into there and it's done in such a way so that there's no one single join but it does leave a little bit to be desired um, join-wise. So I've put the glue on the side which is going to be next to his back so that it's less visible. Um, we then have on here we have on the middle thing has a claw and we need to join a second piece to that like so and then A13, which is this one, goes to the top there. Goes to this upper tendril. So, oops. And then the A12, which is this piece, goes on the lower. Tendril. Like that. And then that is the backpack done. And that supposedly goes into place. there like so so that will be like that and then the final piece the final tendril goes into position there, oops, like that. Okay. 
And there you have it. That is what the warp smith. So that's what the warp smith looks like um, when complete uh, with his backpack on. I'm obviously not going to keep the backpack on because it makes it easier to paint him. But I now have a decision to make. Am I going to put him on his oval base? Um, I don't think so. Uh, and the reason being is that these are, these are the choices that I have. I have the 60 millimeter oval, a 40 or a 50 round. Now, personally, this is the reason why he's been given an oval, and that's because of his cloak. If you put him on a 40, his cloak hangs over the edge, which I don't have an issue with. But when you pop him on a 50, you can be centralised and much of the cloak is still on, or you can bring him a little bit forward, and much of his cloak is still on. Now, um, when you look at the footprint for the 50, that is what you have, basically. So personally, you lose a few, you lose 10 mil off of the ends, have space each side, you gain some space each side. I'm gonna go, I don't think this is gonna be a major drama regarding um, things like uh, distances, measuring distances, because we're losing, because let's face it, you'd probably measure from the front of the oval base anyway. Um, and the 50 mil is actually, you're losing some of that. So I'm gonna glue him down to a 50. And that's what I'm gonna do, but there you go. That is the warp smith. And the Autark done for Eldritch Omens. And those are what I'm going with. Okay, see you in the next video. Take care.